I think they're going to like it. This is the first time I've actually shown my art at the GCTV gallery, other than to my friends. And it's the first time I've ever attempted to sell any. It's funny because, so I occasionally will post one, a picture of one of my paintings on Facebook. And I've had over 100 people like some of my art. But I also know that it's very easy to just hit like. But sometimes I'll get 20 or 30 comments about people saying, oh, this is amazing, or I love this. And so to get that kind of response, I, I, was, kind of, I was kind of shocked. It's happened to several times. It gave me the sense of confidence of that, you know what, I get enough feed, positive feedback, there's an audience for this. Um, but even so, I don't want to hit people over the head with it. They, if they want to see it, that's great. If they like it, that's great. But, and if they want to buy it, that's even better. But ultimately, I just, this is an opportunity for people to see my art that haven't seen it before. For viewers who don't know, GCTV is also the home for Western Mass Community Broadcasting, which is a low-power FM station, 107.9 on the FM dial. And we are not able to use Comcast money, you know, the cable money that, that supports GCTV's operations to fund the operation of the radio station. It's all volunteer run. And as a member of the board and as the, the first chairperson of the committee that formed the station, I feel that it's an obligation of mine to support the station. So my, my artwork that will be for sale for the first time ever at GCTV, um, half of the proceeds from any sale of art will go to WMCB. Uh, so I think that it's a win-win. I would say 90% of the time I start with feeling and emotion. And I might go a month or two without doing any artwork. And then I may do five or six paintings in the space of a day or two. My feeling is, this feeling is going to pass. So I'll acknowledge it. I want to understand it, you know, where did it come from? But it's really, it's just a feeling, it's passing. And so that's kind of how the, the art is as well. It's not, it's not deep. <laughs> it's, it's just, I'm conveying my emotional state. Uh, and I don't even know if somebody looking at it is going to feel what my emotional state was. I think they're going to bring themselves to it. And because I, I get feedback from people and they'll say, oh, that reminds me of when I lived in South America in the jungle. And it's like, I wasn't thinking about that at all. But they have that association. And so I don't want to get in the way of what someone else experiences. I'm simply creating something that I hope is original. I work from emotion. I'm trying to convey movement and energy and emotion. Um, every, I want it to be dynamic. The last thing I want is somebody to look at something and it to, it to be flat and square and static. It needs to move. It doesn't bother me if someone doesn't get it or if they don't care for it because it's so subjective. In fact, people say, well, what is, you know, what is this? What is this? And I don't want to tell them what it even means to me. For one thing, my art changes, the meaning changes as you look at it over time. I kind of look at it in terms of signifiers. So language, which for instance, when we're speaking, each word has a, is a sign, it means something. There's a denoted meaning, there's a connoted meaning, and based upon people speaking the same language and uh, agreeing on what the, what the words mean, they can, they can achieve some kind of communication. I, I just feel that words can be distorted in a way that images, well, they can be changed, obviously. I do that all the time. But when you, when you witness an image, when you come up and you look at it, you're not approaching it intellectually the same way that you approach the written word. It's speaking on a different, it's speaking to a different part of the brain or a different part of the heart. And so I'm trying to somehow make that connection. I, I want someone to look at the painting and see something or put them in a space where they think differently than the way they normally think. Um, so I'm looking to challenge the viewer. And, I, and, and I'm trying to convey that in multiple ways. It's a two-dimensional two surface. Generally artists, they want paintings to look more three-dimensional. How do you do that? Well, we have what's known as the rule of thirds. So based upon where you place your point of emphasis, you can kind of draw the eye to follow a path. And so a lot of what I do is I'm trying to play with our 
normal sensory, you know, the eyes, which, which you know, has a limited spectrum that it can understand color. We, can, we only see so much. So I'm, I'm taking that and I'm kind of messing around with what I know. So what I try to do is play with the depth based on the colors I'm using, based on the shapes I'm using, um, and, and also based upon the types of brush strokes because you, I, I want to create energy. I want to have a sense of, an emotional sense. And I don't, I want it to be felt. S but how do you get there? Well, you just keep messing around and eventually you get a painting sometimes that goes, yeah, that says what I want it to say, or it speaks to me and I like it enough to keep it. You know, as much as there are people that will, oh, I love that, there are also plenty of people that go, I don't get it. Or that's not my kind of, well, that's okay, you don't have to get it, and you don't have to like it. I, I truly, I am my audience, and if it happens to reach somebody else, that's great. We have something in common. We both like that same piece of art. The other thing I like to do is take pictures of my art and then manipulate them digitally. Uh, and it's, and it, it's just astonishing to me how you can take one piece of art and based upon what you do with it, you can get so many variations. It's just a fun exercise. And every now and then I'll, there'll be one and I'll go, whoa. For instance, this right here is a, uh, a section from a painting that I don't even know which painting it is anymore. And it's somewhere in this apartment. There's a painting that this is based on, but I don't recognize it because it's been altered so much. Um, and, and I don't hang this up yet because I don't know if it goes like this, or does it go like this, or does it go like this. I, I run into that with a lot of my art. And so when I have it, you know, if I ever do, when I do have my art framed, I leave it to uh, the person doing the framing to decide which way up because I just can't decide. So I have actually far more digital versions of my art than I have hanging on my walls because I can store them all in a folder on the computer, whereas I can't put everything up on a wall. I'm still experimenting. I'm experimenting taking two different paintings, layering them on top of one another, and blending them in different ways. It's not visceral the way painting is, because painting, I have it in my, I am holding it, it's physical, I am putting the, br the brush to the paper, I'm feeling it, there's the texture, all of that is going on. It's very, very tactile. When I'm on the computer, I am raising and lowering uh, the white on it, or I'm changing the, it's, it's more of an intellectual exercise. And so I think what happens is I have to almost finish messing around with something, and then I export it as a, as a JPEG. And then I look at it, and it's, it's, it's not the same as looking at it it's looking at a painting. However, when I send it out to be printed and it comes back and it's, let's say that it's in a, a frame, it's like, oh my God, it looks like a real piece of art. And that was kind of an odd, you know, because I, I know I'm an artist. Clearly, I am an artist. I, can, I do art. But I've also always had so much respect for artists who make a living at, at doing art. There's so many great artists in the area and I kind of look at them as the, as the pros, and I'm the amateur. But amateur just means you do it out of love. So I, I do it out of love. And, and I think that that brings uh, an innocence to it on a certain level. I'm not, I'm not trying to cater to uh, the market. I know that it's kind of like jazz music. There's only a small audience for it. There's only a small audience for um, abstract art. But that, like I say, I'm not doing it for anybody else but myself. The, I, am, I am hoping to sell some pieces because I th believe that my art is substantial enough that it warrants somebody looking at it and going, wow, I want that hanging up in my house. I'd like a print of that. So that's, you know, here I am. I'm 60 years old. I'm finally ready to sell my art after having been an artist for 58 years. I'm excited. I, I'm looking to invite friends and see people I haven't seen in a long time and kind of celebrate with them something that's part of who I am. You know, to kind of, it's, so I'm, I'm pumped up.